Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Reinvention Show, a place where we come together to discover and co-create solutions to the new world of constant uncertainty, constant disruption, and constant volatility. And our job here is not only figure out how do we survive the uncertainty, but now in the world where uncertainty is the constant, how do we actually thrive in it? How do we turn it into opportunity? What kind of solutions will help us not only stay afloat, but actually enjoy the ride? And today we are in the middle of a perfect example of what volatility and uncertainty looks like. We had a plan to host as our guest the amazing Christina Doras, who is vice president of Visa International, to speak a little bit about reinvention in the financial sector. But Christina had an unexpected disruption and we postponed her session to the next Thursday, leaving us with this new idea of what are we going to talk about today if our guest cannot be with us in the last minute. So I'm excited to spend a little bit of time with you thinking about the next year. And while we are getting together, let me know in the comments, where are you joining us from? Where are you joining us from? I'm back in my studio in Columbus, Ohio, United States. I know that Michael is with us from Dusseldorf, Germany. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anybody else? Where are you joining us from? What part of the world? What city? What country? Uh, I sometimes fail on the geography test. So not just the city, but also a country would be great. And for me, it's a, a special honor to spend some time today with you to think about the end of this year and look forward 2022. And the subject of today's show is why reinvention is the skill for 2022. And I want to ask you, what are your expectations from 2022? If you were to choose three words, that's all, just three words, what are your um, expectations, predictions, trends? What are the most important things that you are seeing in 2022 that you think will shape that year, whether it's for you personally, your company, your industry, or the world at large. And I'll give you some examples of words that I hear a lot. I hear a lot the, the combination of words, the great resignation, the masses of people who are leaving the workforce. And I was looking at the structure of the statistics yesterday. Who are these masses? And it turns out many, many people huge percentage of people who are not returning to work after COVID-19 or leaving the job are early retirees, people 55 and up who are um, done. They're leaving the workforce early, which is a whole different world for us, right? So uh, the great resignation, this wave of people leaving the workforce, that's one of the trends I would put on the list. Nicholas is here from Ivory Coast, Abidjan. Happy, happy, happy to welcome you, Nicholas. Let me know in the chat, what would be your three words or combination of words? Michael word is momentum. Michael is expecting momentum in 2022. And I can definitely see that those of you who are closer to the reinvention community, and Michael is, of course, is a member of our global alliance of reinvention professionals. For us in the alliance, we are seeing massive momentum. There's no question about that. This industry called reinvention, reinvention services, reinvention professionals are definitely seeing a lot of momentum. But in other industries, of course, we're seeing decline. We're seeing a lot of still uncertainty tourism industry, for example, or event planning, still quite difficult level of volatility and uncertainty. So their words in the industry of event management, tourism is a complete and absolute uncertainty. Uh, what about others? What words are your words for 2022? So for some, it's momentum. For some, it's volatility and uncertainty. For some, it's uh, the great resignation or the issues around talent and burnout. Those are the, only, uh, the other two words I hear a lot. For some, there is a lot of questions around growth and market. What will happen to the economy? Are we seeing depression, recession? Are we seeing the growth of the market? So there is a, a question mark. Some, in, some markets are actually in the growth stage. Some are already in the decline. How do we deal with those cycles? What are you? your words of 2022. If you were to choose three words that for you 
define the next year that for you are the greatest trends of the next year what would be the trends that you are tracking and from my end of course as a person who spends her time looking at the speed of change and the level of uncertainty and volatility i only see speeding up we are doing our research every two years we study the cycles uh, every two years, what's the typical average length of a business model cycle? How long can we keep doing the same thing and continue to expect producing value and creating um, really high value for our customers, for our employees, for our stakeholders, and so on? And I see massive, massive speeding up. Unfortunately, currently, uh, I don't see any trends around slowing down around getting more certain and getting more predictable. I see some trends around the inner space. I love that. So the words for 2022 for you are wisdom, freedom, and joy. And I think that is very true, that personal reinvention is the trend for 2022 in our field because so many of us are tired spending our time fixing everything around us, whether it's the economy, the industry, the company, the product, the department, the team, the process, the project, whatever is that that you're responsible for. It's all good and well, but unless we invest in ourselves, unless we renew ourselves, unless we let go of things that no longer serve us, add things that can enhance and strengthen us and make sure that we protect things that should not be let go, this field of personal reinvention is heating up across the board, whatever job you're in, whatever situation you're in, your corporate uh, employee, you work inside an organization, you are an external person, you are a freelancer, consultant, coach, trainer, or you own a business and you're a business owner or working in nonprofit in other sectors, personal reinvention would definitely be among those top words. Wherever you are, let me say a few words why I see reinvention as the skill of 2022. We are in year three of the global pandemic. And I think by now we all know things are not going back to business as usual. They're not. We are forever and ever, or at least for the foreseeable future, I'm not going to say forever and ever, but we are in the foreseeable future, are in a new reality. In the reality where disruption can come in any form, it might be a pandemic or health crisis, social crisis, economic disruption, technological disruption, a new technology, uh, competitor disruption, a new competitor, new boss. So disruption at the level of uh, human engagement. It can be um, regulatory disruption. Your government passed a new law. It can be any kind of disruption. But we see that disruption is here to stay. And this idea that this temporary moment will pass and we go back to business as usual is finally coming to the end. This idea that it's possible to survive the storm and come back to business as usual is simply not holding on to the reality. It's not really being supported by the reality. So as we look at 2022, it's safe to say that whether it's political, economic, social, environmental, um, competitor, technological, or any other disruption coming your way, but you will be facing disruptions. And when we face disruptions, we have one of two choices. We are living in the middle of a particular moment. This is a life cycle. It can be your career. And I ask you to put a spot. Where are you in your career? Maybe you're early in your career your current career state, and perhaps you reinvented many times before. Maybe you're somewhere else. Maybe you're at the peak, or maybe you're already entering the decline. It can be your product. It can be your business model. Whatever is the entity that we're reinventing, the object of our reinvention, we know that when our current state of affairs facing disruption, wherever we are, we have one of two options. Let's say we are right here with our product cycle. Our product 
is already flowing, but it's not yet at the peak of its revenue and performance. Or maybe this is your brand. You're not yet at the peak, but you're growing quite well. Or maybe this is your business model. Maybe that's your career, your current career, wherever you are right now. I know I'm in my third career, so there were many cycles before and before and before. But I'm here right now, and suddenly I'm disrupted. I'm disrupted by COVID-19. I'm disrupted by perhaps an economic crisis or some sort of new regulation, new law. Or I'm disrupted by new customers, new generation of customers who simply don't want my services anymore. Or I'm disrupted by new competitor. Or I'm an accountant and I'm no longer relevant because uh, automated services, apps, and software replace my services. And I'm disrupted. I have two options. Option number one is premature death. I am not able to do anything. I'm holding on tightly. I'm an accountant. I'm just growing my accounting business. And suddenly a software like TurboTax or some other software is disrupting my business. I'm no longer relevant. And our option number one is uh, accelerated death. That's one option. And option number two that I face is reinvention. So one thing that I can say for sure why reinvention is the super skill of 2022 is that we are expecting to face more disruption in 2022, which means you will have to prepare yourself for the fact that either you reinvent or you become irrelevant. Either you reinvent or you become irrelevant. But the things don't stop there. We also see that disruption no longer come alone. They come as flocks of disruptions, as kind of a, uh, not just one goose, but geese as a collection, or not just one wolf, but mass amount of wolves. Uh, the disruptions no longer come alone. It's no longer just health disruption like the pandemic, but it's simultaneously economic disruption, technological, digital disruption, and on and on and on. We know it's not going to be one. It's going to be many. And we also know it's not going to be just one per year. It's going to be a sequence, a cascade of disruption, which means not only I need to learn how to reinvent when the disruption hits, I need to learn how to make it into such an automated habit, such a system or a process where I have an immediate automatic um, kind of almost um, uh, almost unconscious reaction to disruption, which is, I don't go this route, I go the reinvention route. This is what professional athletes do when they spend thousands of hours practicing a perfect pitch so that when they're in the middle of a stress, they practice in the quiet of their home, they practice in a safe environment, they practice in a fields and different weather conditions. But those conditions are still relatively mild compared to being in the middle of a real game with a real competitor, with a uh, collection of people in the stands watching your every move. So when the real game starts, the pitch is so automated. Our reaction is so perfected that we are able to perform even under the most unexpected, strenuous and volatile circumstances. So not only in 2022, we expect that you will see a massive disruption, whether it is for your career, for your personal life, uh, whether it's your organizational life, maybe it's a new boss, maybe it's organizational restructuring. We see a lot of that happen. Maybe your team will quit and you will be left alone without the team you worked with for years and years and years. Maybe it will be technological disruption. Maybe it will be competitor disruption, consumer disruption, regulatory disruption. Whatever is the nature of disruption you will face. Not only we know that it's coming and we don't want this for you. We want the uplift of reinvention for you. We want you to uplift. We also know it's going to be a flock of disruptions. And then the flock of disruptions coming quicker and quicker, more and more unpredictably and more and more often. It's not okay to treat reinvention as a one-time project that we just tighten our belts or we organize ourselves and do this one sprint and we survive. No. There's no more sprint. 
Dealing with uncertainty and volatility is a marathon. We are not here for nine second, 100 meter sprint. We are here for a 42 kilometer marathon, which means we need to train like athletes. We need to get our muscles so automated. We need to get our reactions so perfected. We need to get our organizational processes and reactions so automated and perfected and brought to the highest level that when the flock and cascade of disruptions come, as it's predicted to come in 2022, you are ready. And when you are ready, statistics are very clear. In a typical economic crisis, about 70% of businesses go this fate. They don't survive. They don't survive until the end of crisis. This is the statistic that is pretty expected, right? About one fifth of all organizations do not survive the crisis. But a much more interesting statistic that about 10% of all companies, not just survive a disruption, they actually get much stronger and much better. They're better in terms of revenues and profitability. They're better in terms of employee satisfaction and customer satisfaction. They're just better all around. So my job is to make sure that whatever disruption is coming in your industry, in your government situation, in your uh, social situation, in your professional situation, in your personal reinvention, uh, whatever disruption come in your way, you are not only prepared to react, but you're actually using each wave of disruption to get better and better, to automate and perfect, to figure out a way to actually wait for that disruption so you can monetize on it, that you can turn it into opportunity rather than be scared of it or even worse, to be blinded by it altogether. So I want to ask how many of you are practicing your reinvention skills right now? If you are practicing those skills, whichever way, it really doesn't matter. I would love you to say, give me a plus in the comments. How many of you are doing little or big things to practice your reinvention skills? And little things can be reinventing tiny parts of your life, reinventing the way you run meetings, the reinventing the way you organize your mornings or your evenings, reinventing the ways you write emails, reinventing the way you run your cal calendar. Anything small is okay, but it also can be something big. So give me in the comments a plus if you're building your reinvention muscles right now, if you are preparing yourself for the cascade of disruptions and you're preparing your organization, whether it's your consulting business, as it is for Michael, or your um, uh, corporate environment, organizational environment, your personal career, I see that more of you are preparing right now because I want you to be in this top 10%. I don't want you to be in this bottom 17 I don't want to see so many companies coming to the brink of collapse, so many organizations that are simply not able to deal with disruption as it's coming. As I said, it doesn't come alone anymore. Disruption currently is a tribe. It's not just one type of disruption. It's economic disruption leading to social disruption, leading to technological disruption. None of them are any longer alone. They are coming as like a huge group. So I see that um, Yerkin's, Yerkin's uh, effort is to manage a portfolio of small projects to test different strategies. Absolutely. This is absolutely the way. We know there is a wave of disruptions. So instead of thinking in terms of a singular solution, let's think about portfolio of tests. It's not the answer. We're not testing answers. We're testing our potential questions, our experiments. Absolutely love that. I see that this is really resonating with Nicholas. I can see that the OR is anticipating the disruption. I love that. I love that you are anticipating. So I'm glad to see so many of you are already prepared. And I want to invite you to take that to the next level. And every few months, our global community of reinvention professionals hosts a free live online event that runs for five days. This is called the Easy Reinvention Lab. And the Easy Reinvention Lab is a live interactive space where you can learn a new set of tools. Or perhaps if you've already been to our lab, perfect that set of tools to take it to the next level. So the way the lab is organized, 
the way the lab is organized is that we usually build on five days and the day one we give you the context and help you test your level of baseline skills when it comes to dealing with uncertainty and disruption so day one will help you do the titanic syndrome test and see how ready you are to face the icebergs of uh, our volatile and uncertain ocean of life and how prepared you are and where you can improve day two we deal with the resistance to change. There's absolutely no question that many, many organizations and also many families and individuals' careers are destroyed by resistance to change. And we dive on day two into neuroscience, biology, not psychology, biology of resistance to change and give you an exercise you can use again and again with your team, with your family, with your bosses, with your clients, a specific very easy three-step exercise that allows you to turn resistance to change into buy-in and mobilization. Day three, we go to our tool set around Blue Ocean Strategy. We actually adapt one of the tools of Blue Ocean Strategy and do a deep dive into your customers. Whatever you are reinventing, uh, whether you're reinventing your own career and you are your customer and those who are you're serving is your customer, whether we are talking about your company, your consulting services, your coaching, your freelancing, your nonprofit, we look at the reinvention from the point of your blue ocean strategy. On day four, we give you a very simple exercise to come up with a achievable plan. And day five, it's a lot of science-based tools that help you get towards implementation. Implementation, not just theory. I want you to leave those five days with actual, actual efforts and a, a vector towards action. So uh, Easy Reinvention Lab starts on January 10th, completely free, open to all about 250 people around the world, professionals from very different fields. Usually we have Managers and organizations who join us, both nonprofit and for profit, of course, more on the for profit side and the business side. Um, consultants, coaches, business trainers come join uh, the Re Re Reinvention Lab because they can use those tools for their customers immediately. We have business owners who joined the Easy Reinvention Lab. We had more than 2,000 business owners who came in and were able to reinvent their companies, especially during the lockdown of the pandemic, but currently are facing another wave. We also have, of course, students, educators of every kind join us. So I hope you grab a link. You can see that the link is in your comments. You can find the registration that looks like this. So this is on LinkedIn. And those of you who are looking on Facebook, there is a, a link for you on Facebook. This is our very first Easy Reinvention Lab of 2022, and we'll focus on planning and uncertainty. So how do you plan an uncertainty? How do you actually have some sort of control when everything is volatile, uncertain, and falling apart? So I invite you to join us for Easy Reinvention Lab. For those of you who look forward to hearing more on reinvention, this is the easiest way to get more. You come, it's about one hour a day. It's not a full day commitment. You only need to set aside about hour a day for live stream and about 30 minutes for the exercise. So all together, hour and a half tops. We do offer you part-time um, um, limited time replays so you can catch up later. Would love to see you at the lab. But let me come back to the question of today. The question of this show, why is reinvention the skill of 2022? I am here not objective. I'm very, very subjective, but very partial. I come from the field of sustainability and strategy. I see the level of volatility and uncertainty in the market. And I know in my gut of gut, in my heart, I know that there will be more disruption to come. Every data points to that. Every experience points to that. Everything I touch, feel, and work with suggests that volatility and uncertainty is not going to decrease. If anything, perhaps it will increase, which means we have to give up idea that we need to survive until volatility and uncertainty come down. 
it's just not useful idea anymore. It's not going to come down. So waiting and postponing your life and trying to survive by cutting the expenses or tightening your belts is simply not going to work. We need to learn how to thrive in uncertainty, not wait until uncertainty is over. It's not going to be over anytime soon by any recollection, but instead learning how do we turn uncertainty into opportunity. And that is what reinvention is all about. Reinvention is a field, a professional field of both science and practice that is dedicated to one question. How do we maintain and increase the level of life in a typical system, whether that system is your career, your family, whether that system is your team or your department, whether that system is your product or your product portfolio, your entire organization or your entire industry. We are here to understand how do we sustain and increase the level of life in your system. And for that, we need to start treating reinvention not as this one-time thing that we need to survive, but as a part, normal part of life, as a skill set that is as natural to us as writing, reading, and counting. That is a basic literacy skill. That is a, a, a part of a habit of natural automatic reaction to any disruption. So I love to see that you will share. Please share the link. The lab is free. There's no uh, any kind of hidden anything happening there. We have over 5,000 people around the world who already participated in the labs in the past two years. And we already have about 250 professionals from literally every walk of life who is joining us for January 10 to 14 Easy Reinvention Lab. So we'd love to see you there live, free, online, and extremely hands-on. Very important. If you're not ready to roll up your sleeves and actually do something, this is not for you. This is a place where we go pragmatically and practically. And unless you get off the couch and do the work, unless you actually do the work of reinvention, there's no point of registering. So if you feel like this is just something that you might watch as a side story, this is not for you. You will be annoyed and distracted. Come with a challenge. Come with a specific reinvention agenda. And please do roll up your sleeves and actually do the exercises, you will be surprised how quickly you will find the answer to two questions. What is reinvention and how do I do it? What is reinvention and how do you do it? The answer is in the doing. So I would love to see you to the uh, at the Reezy Reinvention Lab. Again, it's live, it's free, it's online. You need no more than an hour and a half a day. You can bring your team you can bring your family, you can bring your colleagues and friends, you can bring your department, you can do it together, you can actually come with a real business challenge. By the end of five days, I guarantee you will leave enriched with specific course of action available to you. Love, love, love to see your feedback. Uh, I love you back. This is absolutely beautiful. Uh, love to see you connect. I know that we are preparing for the holidays. So next week will be the last live we will do before the holidays and then I go for vacation. So next week we are planning to have our reinvention show with Christina Dorish, who is vice president of Visa International, the credit card most of you probably have on your wallet. And she will speak with me on reinvention in the financial industry. And we would love, love, love your questions for Christina. So please join us next Thursday at 11 a.m. And until then, thank you so much for joining me today. See you at the lab. I hope you're enjoying your pre-holiday uh, weekends. And uh, if you have any more questions or reactions to this show, give them to me in the comments. Big, big warm hello. Big love to all of you. And again, see you next week.